Hello everyone, this is Dipali and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we will be talking about work schedules. We will see how can we create work schedules in the system. If you happen to be new, please consider subscribing down below. Hit the bell icon to get notifications on my new videos. Without further ado, let's get started. In order to create the work schedules, you have to go to manage data from the actions. I'm already in there and in the create new search for work schedule here i see multiple options and few of the mandatory fields which are marked with the red asterisk i will start defining these fields one by one as i proceed the external name let me just give any name which i want to give to this particular work schedule object maybe as tb underscore eight hours five days this is just how i would like to name this work schedule and i will add other fields which would also define that this particular work schedule is five days a week and eight hours every single day starting date could be anything or the date which this work schedule should be available to be applied to the employees I am giving 1 1 1900 so that anyone in the system can use it. I am not defining or restricting this particular work schedule based on the country. If I select any particular country here, say for example, if I just select Afghanistan here, then this particular work schedule will be available to employees who belong to any legal entity in Afghanistan. So I don't want to restrict the work schedule to any particular country. So I just leave it as is. Next comes the model and this is what we have to understand when we are creating any particular work schedule. I have three options here to define a model of a work schedule. It is simple, period and schedule. Now what is a simple work schedule? Let me just select it and show you. So if I click on simple, you see there are a few more fields that pop up here. Five of these are average fields which says average hours per day average hours per week per month and per year and average working days per week these fields are needed in the calculation for the payouts it is always good to define these fields and we can see in the help section this question mark icon that you see here gives the help for these particular fields to get the values that these fields should accept so it says that you can enter a figure, a relevant figure between 0 to 24 to two decimal places. So it says average hours per day. I want my average hours per day to be eight hours per day. Average hours per week would be 40 if I'm working five days a week and per month would be 14 to four, right? Considering four weeks in a month. But then this calculation again would vary because there are 31 or 30 days in a month and we just cannot replicate or just multiply by four there would be few days left so there is a different way to calculate these and this is all done in the pay calculations and it says per month 168 for example average hours per year if you see this it says you can enter a relevant figure between 0 to 8784 these are the average hours per year that this field will accept and we can give two decimal places this entry is required if you want to use the time account payout feature so if the time account payout feature is enabled in the system it is important to give this particular field else the calculations would not be correct so maybe i can give eight seven double zero you can also give as per your requirement it says average working days per week is five and work schedule days for simple model so here i have to define how my each single day will look like so i will say day one planned hours decimal planned hours and minutes so it's how i want to define the planned hours so i want to define the planned hours as eight and if you see here if i just give this value the value under planned hours and minutes in the particular format hh colon mm gets defaulted so i will define five days 
with eight hours every single day. And then I can define my day six and seven of the week with zero hours, just telling the system that I'm not working on these two days and these two days are non-working days for me. I'll just copy the external name and give the same in the external code as well. And if your work schedule is an individual work schedule, you can set it to yes. In my case, I'll just leave as is and I'll click on save. It gives me the error external code should not be longer than 10 characters. Are you sure you want to continue? Yes. Okay. Just to give you a background of it, why I get this error. External code should not be 10 characters because in the EC side, this is all good. I can have an external code which is more than 10 characters. But when it comes to the integration of the employee central with the SAP payroll, the name of the work schedule in the SAP payroll side should match exactly to the name of the work schedule in the EC side and hence I get that error. This work schedule will not be replicating or there would be errors if I'm using SAP payroll. So in my case, I'm just showing you for demo purposes. So this is all good. So just make sure your name is within 10 characters if you are using SAP payroll. So now what I'll do is I'll just go to take action and make correction and I'll try to change the simple model to period model, right? If I just change it, you will see that the average values remain and I here get another option to define how my day looks like. So I will again give the definition of my day. So it's day one, it's category. I have an option to select whether it is through a day model, planned hours or non-working hours. And it can be a mix of any combination of the category. Say for example, if my day one and day two are based on day model and my day three is based on planned hours my day four is also based on planned hours my day five is again a day model my day six is a non-working day and my day seven is also a non-working day right rest everything remains the same and we'll click on save See, I have so many errors. It says the external code should not be longer than 10 characters. I know it is a warning message and I can ignore this for now. My first error says, if you choose day model as the category for day one, you have to choose a day model, right? So here, if I say here, do I have any day model? Yes, I do have. But if I want to create a new one, I can click on this plus icon here to create a day model external name this is just a name of the day model and here i'll give eight hour day in the planned hour decimal i have given eight the planned hours and minutes is automatically defaulted i don't want to restrict this to any particular country so i'll just leave this blank shift classification is used if you have any shift workers or those kind of scenarios time recording variant would be clock times or duration duration is used in those cases when you have a specified set work schedule that you have to work eight hours a day but your time doesn't matter to an extent that it affects your pay so if you are working as a full-time employee say from 9 to 5 and you reached office sometimes at 9 30 and leave at 5 36 it doesn't matter what matters is just the duration and clock times is used when your login and your logout times are recorded mostly used for the workforce employees here i'll just leave it as duration external code i'll just give the same that i gave above and i click on save and i'll close this then here when i select day model i can see the new day model that i have just created you can create other day models and assign here depending upon how you want to design your work schedule so i had three days when i had to select a day model so i've just selected random day models and i click on save and see what happens now 
so i get another message if you see here if you choose planned hours as category you have to enter a decimal value okay and where do i have to enter a decimal value these are day models so just beside planned hours there is details here i do not have to define a day model because i have categorized this particular day as planned hours and here decimal value so i'll just give six so planned hours and minutes are defaulted in that particular format start time and end time is not relevant for me because my work schedule is based on duration there is another day day four which is based on planned hours i'll just give this as five the other one i had given as six and i'll just finish and save i can now save my work schedule this is how you create a period work schedule which is a mix of the day models the planned hours and the non-working days by non-working days the system will be able to identify that for these particular days the employee is not working there is one more thing that i would like to share is here is the starting date which is first of january 1900 if you just check the calendar, 1st of January 1900 is a Monday. So by starting date, we mean that the work schedule that we have defined here, these seven days starts repeating from my starting date. So this would mean that 1st of January 1900 is my day one. And then from then on till day seven, and then it keeps repeating every single week with seven day pattern. I can also have a pattern of 10 days, 15 days or any number of days that I want to. I can create here by take action, make correction and I add another day as 8 and 9 and 10 based on planned hours and I can define my planned hours here as seven hours and save so this is how you create a period model and this period model will start from 1st of January 1900. If I change this date to say 1st of January 2020, then this particular work schedule will not be available in the system. No, the admins will not be able to select it to assign it to the employees because the creation or the starting date itself is 1st of January 2020 any date before 1st of january 2020 this work schedule will not be available if say for example my 1st of january 2020 is a wednesday so my day one will be a wednesday and it will not be a monday so my day two will be thursday friday saturday sunday so six seven eight nine it repeats monday tuesday wednesday nine ten will be thursday and friday right and then my day one would be a saturday and not a wednesday so my starting date just defines the starting point or the starting trigger of this particular work schedule right and i'll just duplicate this and try to create another work schedule this is the last work schedule that i want to show today just give the external name as db underscore work schedule underscore schedule starting date could be anything maybe just leave it as first of january 2020 don't want to make it country specific leaving it as is and if you see here simple and period we did now i will select the schedule model so once i select the schedule model the system asks me to define which period model this schedule should belong to so here i'll just give the name of the work schedule that i just created the period model this one right hours eight hours five day this is what i created just now and time recording variant would be duration and i don't want this to be an individual work schedule i'll give the same external code as i have given here and i'll click on save ignore this error 
and yes so this is how we created three work schedules of different models simple period and schedule so if you want to create shift employee say for example there is an employee who works in a two week pattern so he works for two weeks continuously and then he takes off for next two weeks again he works for two weeks and then again he takes off for next two weeks so we can define a one month schedule for those particular employees and then assign this work schedule to them and hence it keeps repeating so thank you so much for watching the video i hope it was helpful for you do remember to check my other videos you can check the link that you see on the screen as well please do comment in the comment section if you're looking for any specific topics in the employee central area see you soon in my next video thank you bye for now